Where's that big painting of yourself that you have? That's in the other room, but I didn't want to do it right away. I figured we'd wait on that one. I had a feeling that Kasim was going to have a crush on you this episode. So I'm happy you're wearing a lot of clothes. Why? Because he's got a great oh, uh, pod? I can yeah, tell. Look, that's, Beth's got some kind of a furry thing here. Oh, this. sexual. This is, this is Tiger King-ish, no? <laughs> Oh, wow. the whole world is obsessed. Are we getting right into that? or how's it... <laughs> Yeah, we can yeah. if you want. Oh, my God. I mean, how it's everything Joe Exotic wanted. He's the, oh. he's the mascot of COVID-19, 2020. Seriously. Yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. I mean, there's just so many little things on that. Oh, my God. I Did two, you, is everybody done with it now? I have two episodes left and finishing tonight. All right. Well, uh, there's one thing I want to see if you guys then notice. Jane, it won't give anything away. So, um, and by the way, Jane, hi. I haven't seen you in hi, so long. I Catherine, know. it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet I feel you. like I, I honestly I've been listening to. I think I've heard every episode at this point. Really? And, um, oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I'm kind of just jumping right in. Oh please. Um, but uh, the guy with the teardrop. Oh yeah. Uh, Alan, what's his name? <laughs> I think it's something Alan. Either that's yeah, yeah. his last or first name or whatever. But like. He um, they're they're doing like a little interview with him, and he's running the bath, and then he just oh, yeah. gets into the bath. Like, so what? Yeah. What? Yeah. You know what? Let's make this a let's make this a bathtub shot. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Why did they need to? Like, there was a lot of doing this for. for this? The fact Are you going to get in the bath was, right now? Yeah, <laughs> the footage of the guy killing himself. Oh my god! Oh Wait, yeah. You, yeah, that that was crazy. Yeah, I watch, and then the mom was clearly on meth as well. Oh my yeah. god, nobody had teeth it in was their mouth. So sad. I think the mom like, was on like a lot of uh, like Xanax style. They're all on drugs. Like, Even like, the guy with the long blonde hair who was like on yes. his head, you know, and he was clearly high. And then he had a stuffed animal tiger right next to him, and he was just so. Oh, so that was the whole thing, and he just kind of like. <laughs> He was bad. That dude later. was wasted. And That's then, the guy who, like, when he got the job, he had just gotten out of prison. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh. It's I'm putting my phone away. I was trying to figure something out, but I'm just, I'm going to need your eight-year-old kid because I can't figure shit out. Is this, I, yeah, am I the only one with these in just because I feel like, uh, I don't know. I thought I'd, I'd be able to get the noise canceling. Myself. Apparently, these are very cool. I got the ones with the wire that I usually just wear. No, the noise canceling are good. No, I, I find that I get a ton of earwax on them, and I'm constantly wiping them on my shirt. I'm going to give them right back to my wife when I'm done with earwax or not, so I don't really. You know they actually say you're, you're really healthy if you produce a lot of earwax? Oh, really? My baby does, so that makes sense. Yeah, it's really okay. good. I'll tell right. you this. When, in regards to earwax, I had a, <laughs> uh, a free earwax accident. <laughs> I was in um, Denver, up in the mm. mountains somewhere. I think it was called Granby Mountain. And uh, we were up there with a bunch of friends, and we were doing like a uh, just a up in the mountains snow ski weekend. And I was in the kitchen, and I just feel this thing like hit my ear lobe and fall on my shoulder. And I see this like giant brown thing on the ground. And I'm like, oh, maybe something fell on me. It turns out I had a giant ball of earwax fall out of my head <laughs> onto the ground. And I, and I think it's because it was, it was so cold that it just hardened <laughs> and, and it fell out <laughs> as a little ball. And I picked it up. And I was like, oh, and you know, I don't know if I'm the only one that does this, but then you just start squishing it in your what? hand. And what? I've never had a big sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was I will say, well, James, you Jamie, know, having don't, kids. Don't like, look disgusted. Oh. I get satisfaction of seeing like, things on yes. the ocean. Like, I do oh, with yeah. the kids. With the kids. Oh, like, I'll do kids? that. Oh, yeah. my God. I'll be like, lay down on your side. I'm going to get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I do. But. No, I never had it actually hit me in the shoulder. It fell, yeah, it <laughs> fell off, and it, it was, had enough mass that I felt something nice. land on me. Damn. That's one of your proudest accomplishments, I think. I was so proud of what my body was <laughs> able to do. I feel, like, I feel like I'm only just getting to know you, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what's had, you know what all of this has really, like, I actually, this is the God honest truth, this whole quarantine situation, there's a big part of me that's actually going to miss 
like what I'm having with my family as hard as it is. Like, it's just so nice that we're all here. Like it's really beautiful. Yeah. And we know to, you know to need to do it more. But then I was also thinking, I'm like, you know, I've spent a lot of time with Cass. I'm doing this podcast, but I don't really know him. I need to like hang out with him more. And there's like other people in my life that I've thought about that too, but you were one of them. Well, we were just talking about you today. L- Lindsay was like, uh, we we're talking about the, the, the sweatshirt. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then we, we, we came to the conclusion that we all would love to, as soon as this is over, do some sort of regular hang, That'd be whether great. it be board game night, whether it be, you know, I'm sure we could figure this out off the pod, but you know, yeah. <laughs> It's, Jason, it's you can really, fly out. I'm probably not going to make it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And Rob, we found out that Joe Perino, guest of the show, has... Has Corona. Corona. Oh, I mean, he hasn't been oh, tested. Shit. He hasn't been tested. But him he and I were DMing a bit. And he told... Like, I texted him, like, how are, you guys do- how are you guys doing? Just thinking, like, how are you? And he's like, I have no sense of taste or smell. And I was like, oh, shit, you have it? Yeah. He's like, and you know okay. what they said? They're quarantining separately in the same apartment. Because, like, I guess, what was the reason they said, Cass? You said something about how it could be different viral strains. Uh, I, I don't right. know. It's going oh, down. So she time. has it, too? Yeah, yeah they, they both, both have, have it. it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you know anyone, Jason? Well, so you're in New York. I, you're in- yeah, I'm in New, I'm in New York. I, I have uh, one of our cousins has it. Uh, oh. who's a police officer. And um, I think he's the closest one right now uh, to us, basically, that has him. We haven't seen him. Uh, we probably haven't seen him in person in a couple of months anyway. But um, he has three kids and a wife, and they're, he's apparently quarantining in a room or something. I, I don't know how. I don't know how it's possible to do it, but... Yeah. Hey, are you freaking out not working out? Because I know you're a big workout guy. What are you doing? He has totally a working out. I got it. No, I got a. Ba- I got. I got something in the basement. Some You're like a bow flex to, or something. Yeah, <laughs> I just <laughs> a lot of thigh master. I'm doing a lot <laughs> of thigh master. Uh, no, I got. Yeah, thankfully I have some stuff in the in the basement that like I was like, all right, I'll dust this off and yeah, and make it work. But Did, are you doing anything, Rob, in your in your room or? I, I've doing? I've missed one day so far. And it was because I didn't uh, sleep. I couldn't sleep one night because like I had. My thoughts were racing. So I think this podcast might be a descent into madness for me. Like you might watch someone actually go crazy through, through these Zoom podcasts. I had one night where I couldn't go to bed because my brain was like, and like wouldn't stop. And I was late and I woke up an hour and a half later facing, like basically looking at my laptop. I keep it like over on the, the dresser on the night set, like in a position I've never woken up in in my entire life. Like I'm just... So that, really? that day I went for like a six mile fucking walk. Cause I was like, I can't just sit in this apartment anymore. So I felt a lot better, but uh, Jason had the greatest response when I asked him, I was like, do you want to do the podcast? And he's like, he's like, well, I'd love to do it, but I really just have nothing going on these last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no shit. Pal. Just like, yeah, this is what he, Rob, since you guys started, Rob was like, you got to come on. You gotta, it's like, Wait for the pandemic, then I'll come on because then it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I thought you're gonna fly me in, put me up at the four seasons, but instead now you don't even want to be with me in the same room. It's like Dude, you I was I'm trying to think because like we had Ginger on the show who was like uh for everyone else, it was like a PA on the show. She's the I know, I didn't know her. I know that like so I did I did hear it, but so she didn't come on until you guys said season four. Season and four? the whole time I was trying to figure Noreen, out who is Ginger. Was Noreen still a PA? Yes. Or was yes. she was an AD then? Noreen. Or Noreen was our ginger and then she became an AD. Okay. Right. Okay. But yeah, I remember Noreen. Yeah, yeah. What my my point of, of bringing that up was like it's like the same way I feel about Jason, I feel about gingers. Like I feel like Jason was there the whole time. Yeah, I'm you were there for like yeah. you were there for like what one season or two? I was th- I was there for a piece of one season, and then the entire third season was like you know our Jamie, love affair. Yeah. Do you remember when like you and I? I feel like you and I are very much responsible for that, like the whole storyline. So you know when well, you were there for like a bit of the season, but you weren't necessarily Jackie Jr. Oh you yes, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were like. You were in in a group scene. Was it what was it? Was it? It wasn't a funeral, was it? They had. Um, 
It was some party. I, think I was at one oh, funeral, nice. but no, I, it was like their engagement party. Um, yeah. Uh, Chris and Adrian. Aida. Oh, okay. no, no. Aida and um, David Richie. Provo, uh, Richie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, had, Richie. they put Jason and, I, Jason and I next to each other and they're like, you two just talk here. And we're like, oh, this could be like a funny storyline if we were ever like a couple. Yeah. And yeah, literally. Like, I do remember that. Then where they had us chemistry read together. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that's, I don't know if, Rob, I don't even know if you know this, but so I did that one or maybe two episodes in that second season at the end when we did that scene. And um, I had some other little things with with David Proval. Um, And then we went on hiatus and like, I had no idea. They didn't say like, oh, your character will be back or anything like that. And then uh, I remember at the, at the like rap party or whatever it was, it's like, oh, maybe we might have Jackie Jr. back. You never, you know. Um, and then went on hiatus. I didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything. And then finally I got a phone call. Like they're bringing the character back, but they want you to come back in. Like I had no credits at the time or anything. And I guess they didn't realize they wanted the character to grow into something. And so I had to go through like stages of trying to rewin something that I already mm-hmm. got basically. And that's when you and I did the screen test. Yep. We, uh, the Tim Van Patten directed the mm-hmm. screen test and we did like a little, it was a restaurant scene. I think that yeah. we never even, it was, yeah, right. We, we, we went out to dinner yeah. or something. It never was in the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And, and you and I always got along. And, and the fact that we already knew each other was, I mean, it was definitely helpful for me and going I, into I that screen like, test. Very clearly like, had a favorite. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. you yeah, no. So it, it, it worked that well. I, I feel like uh, besides maybe Jamie, it's like when you were on the show, I feel like I spent more time with you than anyone ever. Yeah. <laughs> and all that, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the Chris thing. We, we were that. younger, like, right? I mean, like, if you think about it, everybody else on the show was... Oh, so much old. So it was like I didn't know where I to was fit like either. You know, it was like twenty that season we shot that. Not even eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, you're a couple years younger than me. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I was probably twenty one or twenty two. I think at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rob. We spent a lot of time. Like, yeah. And you? How old were you? Fifteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. yeah. But go ahead. Yeah, we spent a lot of time doing what. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, yeah, we, we, we went out and stuff like that, but, but I mean, honestly, I did, I felt like you were like my younger brother. I know now it's weird that you're, you're an old man now. Almost, no, I mean, you're listen, almost as old as me now, right? You're, you're getting up there. You took but, me shopping for the first yes. time as, as a man. <laughs> so, so this, yeah, this is like, so, you know, you get invited to all these premieres and everything like that. And, you know, so at the time, like I would always put on like, you know, I didn't dress pants and like, you know, some kind of a shirt or something like that. You know, I thought you had to get dressed up and wear something nice to go to all these, you know, screenings and this and that. So Rob wasn't going to any of this stuff. And like, I would go uh, with my, it was my girlfriend now, my wife at the time, but oh, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time. Um, and we would go to those things. And I was like, Rob, why don't you come? And he's like, oh, I don't really have anything to wear. I don't, you know, I don't know. So we took him to a mall. We took him to Lord and Taylor, you know, Lord and Taylor. Um, okay. And basically like we, we, we must've got there. Maybe it was a Sunday or something. The three of us get into the mall and they're going to close in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You remember that Rob? No, I remember because you told me when we had dinner before I left New York. Okay. Okay. So basically but you, you can, he's, he's being nice when he says, it was when I had no money to ever buy <laughs> any type of clothing to wear anywhere appropriate. So like I was, I was, my wardrobe then is exactly what it is now, which was like a bunch of hoodies and, and like three pairs of ripped jeans and like one pair of sweatpants. And so he's like, come on, I'll, I'll, I'll just, just come. Oh, yeah. like, so, and I didn't have a credit card at the time. So like I told my mom, I'm like, you got to get like a thousand dollars out of the bank for me. And Jason says he's going to take me to shopping. He showed up literally with money in his hands. Like huh. this. he's like, I have this, I don't know what. So we get there is like 10, 15 minutes till the store closes. And we're like, all right, uh, uh, we got to hurry. The sales guy's looking at us. He probably recognized you. I don't even remember. And like you, we were like, just get in the dressing room. We'll, we'll start bringing you stuff. 
And we literally just started bringing him dress pants and, and like dress shirts and things like that. And he would just come out and we'd look at him and be like, yeah, all right, let's get that. And uh, I mean, it was like pretty <laughs> woman or something. It was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And then when we were done, like ready to buy all the stuff, he, he like he came out with the money. He's like, all right, I have, it was like rolled up bills, like just like. <laughs> and the best part was I would show up, like Jason would be like, yo, let's go to this premiere next week or something and i would show up and because him and his girlfriend picked out my clothes i showed up looking exactly <laughs> like him <laughs> you know so we would be on the red carpet together wearing like the same like like a bowling like button up a calvin klein like muscle shirt and i had no muscle <laughs> it was so embarrassing yeah that's yeah. so cute oh, we gotta find that picture oh, oh yeah, my there's, god there's a oh wait speaking of pictures bryce can you can i i send some pictures to Bryce for him to show because I want to get Jason's uh, thoughts on a few pictures. Okay, well, let me see if I, if I just hold the camera. I was just going to say, you, send me, you sent me one. That's what but, I'm going to uh, do. That was is one. that the one? But I want to see if I just hold it up. Will it work? Hold on. Well, you got to wait until it gets in focus. Oh, you got that one. Ooh. <laughs> that's, oh, from the, yeah, that's from the show, right? There's some oh, so youth on those cheeks, man. Right? Wait, so how long was that storyline for? A whole season almost. Yeah, yeah. it was. Like yeah, mom. yeah, it was. A, what? So Jason, that? Like your mom. I look like everyone tell, tells me that, that when I was like on the show and I had more like oh, wow. baby fat, I guess, or whatever, that I look way more like my mom and now I look more like my dad. How are your parents, by the way? They were so sweet too. I remember that. I think your mom was at the screen test, actually. Probably because I was under 18. Yeah. Uh, I think she had Corona, you guys. Whoa, really? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Is she okay now? Right okay. She's totally okay. You said she came to your house and Cutter was freaking out. Was it before, after, or during? No, she she just a couple of days ago, a week ago, had um, no fever or cough, but everything else. Like shortness of breath, um, diarrhea, sore throat. So tired, couldn't get out of bed, not really an appetite or taste, but no temperature or cough. So maybe some sort of like variation of it. I don't know. It's crazy. I feel like everyone in New York has it. And you know what's crazy is like, I think the numbers are so much higher because one, we know people like Joe and Yuri, they're just not getting tested because they're like, what do, what do we get? If we yeah. get tested, then what? Yeah. And then other people I know who have it, they're a family of four who are sick and they send one person to get tested. But and then they're like, okay. have it. Yeah, they're like if they have it, then we know we have it. So could you imagine the numbers must be fucking yeah. insane. Yeah, and the people who are don't have any symptoms, but yeah. Oh, oh, that was, was so cute. I mean, how funny. Kasim, you see, obviously Rob was very funny even back then. Yeah. Me laughing and laughing. Just, Always so funny. He just looks like a bully to me, just like a bully <laughs> kid. So what? wait, I don't know. I don't know if we what? even Talked about Jason or gave you a, an intro, but you were an actor, and this was this your first gig on The Sopranos that you mentioned? Because you say you yeah, I mean, I did stuff when I was a kid. So yeah. I worked when I was a kid, um, probably from when I was like seven years old till maybe eleven or twelve or something like that. I yeah. I did like a lot of modeling when I started, and then hell yeah, TV commercial. You know, I did like the regular. TV commercials, and then I got some parts in movies and stuff, but then I just kind of stopped doing it. I didn't want to do it anymore. So The Sopranos was the first thing when I decided yeah. I wanted to do it again. And I, that, that role was the first thing I got. So what happens... So Okay, so you get, you get on The Sopranos for a season, and then you're off, right? Yeah. What, you know, what does that do to your career as an actor? Uh, I mean, I, truthfully, the first when I first got off, it was just... I don't want to say it was, yeah, I was pretty upset. I was devastated probably at the time, but like, yeah, like because power too, right? What's that? They told you like they, they were like decided at the last minute. I feel like if I'm remembering. Um, correctly. I had, I actually, so I, I met with David. He actually told me in person, um, in his office and it was probably two weeks before we shot it. So maybe the episode before or something like that. I do remember it hitting me like a ton of bricks, like, Oh, there's no way to get out of it. Like, you know, I mean, this is just happening, but the, see the thing for me was I really, at the time, I just really wanted to make it to season four because I remember thinking like, okay, when we went from season two to season three, 
I couldn't enjoy that feeling of, of like, I'm going back and I can't wait to get right. back. It's here because I didn't know I was going back. Right. And then, so then I finally did get back on season three. And then I really, I enjoyed the whole time I was there. I have to say, like, I, I did, you know, they say, you know, you don't want to miss out on everything going on at the time. I totally enjoyed and, and had a ball doing it. And I was like, Oh, that'd be great to have like this to look forward to now come back to this, hopefully yeah. go do something on the hiatus. Or whatever. And then I was like, Oh, I'm not coming back to it. Like, you know, that, that was just like devastating. Devastating. Yeah, totally. yeah. Well, didn't, weren't you working at your parents' restaurant while oh, the yeah. show was on and they were like, you were in the back cooking and they were telling people to yeah. come back and meet you? Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, my family was great for that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I was a short order cook at our breakfast and lunch like restaurant that we had. So yeah, episodes were airing, and I was give like, it, "Give it a shout out, scrambled it's eggs and omelet." Doing great right now. What's that? Yeah, no, we're not, we don't even have it anymore. That's <laughs> it. So now the restaurant business is done, and we're out of that. You saw um, it coming. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I was like, "I'm getting out of it." But I was making omelets and making hamburgers and this and that. People were like, "Is that not? Isn't that the guy that was on uh, <laughs> Sopranos?" It was yeah. finally, eventually, like you know, I I, I hung that uh, spatula up and, and moved on. Mm-hmm. Your parents I, were so I hated that proud. job so bad. What? I said your parents were so proud of you. I remember because we, we were so close. We had like fucking 16 year old old man sleepovers, remember? You came I remember <laughs> yeah, you coming to my parents' house. The bubble bath you talking about? The, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm running my bath now. <laughs> yeah. The um my parents, I remember them making chicken cutlets. I think they asked, like, what is Rob like? And I maybe I asked you, and I think you said chicken cutlets and oh, something right. else. And it was like 500 pounds of chicken cutlets. Here we go. Like more chicken cutlets, Rob, more. Like if he doesn't throw up, like he didn't have a good time here. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I, cause I remember being in your basement and they had like a shrine. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I oh, got them to move that. The garage is a fucking shrine. And it's is so it annoying because really? it's open all the time. So people that drive by see like. It, it was it's pretty yeah it's bad when people come over that like like somebody who like works for like cable vision or something comes over and they're like they're to pick <laughs> something and then you're standing in front of like three thousand pictures of yourself you like, like it uh, it's my parents house i swear you know my yeah. uncle has the pinball machine shout out uncle bob uncle does he bob. i know somebody that has it too they ha- they actually have it um where we go in the summer we go to the jersey shore they have it right at like the arcade where my kids go to. So that's pretty funny. How old are your I'm, kids? I'm, I'm, I'm on there, which surprisingly I have a little tiny like square, like on the uh, pinball that's machine. Nice. Oh, yeah, it's How really many kids cool. do you have? I have two, uh, 11 and eight. My son is 11. My daughter's eight. Yeah. You're how old are you? You have two boys, right? And two boys, six and two. Six and two. Are you doing, nice. cause I, I have a friend who has four kids and she said they officially started like legit homeschooling this week where they expect the kids in different grades who have like different curriculum to be taught yeah. all the, the shit. So they act like people just have one kid and they're like, oh, teach your kid this. And they're like, yeah, but there's three other ones. Yeah. And most people yeah. by the way, are still trying to do their job from home. I know. Right. I, I know. Homeschooling. I did a little bit of homework, well, schoolwork, whatever you want to call it with my, with my daughter. We did some uh, some reading stuff and whatever, but Beth does a lot of the schoolwork and she's working from home too. So it's yeah, it's a lot. I Wasn't try to Beth avoid. A nurse? I try to avoid helping if, if possible. <laughs> she was, but now she um, she runs a uh, plastic surgeon's office, oh, so okay. she works in private practice now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Can you tell the people you and Beth's story? Because it's one of you're one of the only people I know who like high school sweethearts, right? Yeah, I love. Of that. Yeah. yeah, and I want to know uh, how weird it was when you were on the show dating on the show dating Jamie and if there was any sort of like if there was any jealousy. When or, Jamie and I were dating in the, the newspapers. Yeah. Oh, oh is that yeah. what happened? I forgot about that. You remember that? Yeah. You remember yeah. that. We were dating we this is a love triangle because me and Jamie, there was an article that me and Jamie were dating once too. There was, was it really? Yeah. I I so, that what? Hey, you know, I have a terrible memory, so I know you're right. Yeah, it was like, it was like, surprise, because we were at a club in Vegas together, and it was like, we were probably just like being us, and it was like, 
Soprano star Robert Eiler and Jamie Lynn seemed canoodling. <laughs> in, like, they love like, that fucking word. They that's love the, word yeah. they the same exact. That's the same exact word they used for us, and that was the first time I had ever heard that word. I feel like you and I might have gone to like a party and then like dinner or something. We did. That's like, exactly what we did. Like yeah, party. and then it became something else, like that we yeah. went here or there or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we went to some little restaurant or whatever. It was no big like spot that like it, you know. Well, I, that season, the third, the, the, the season we shot the third season was the one and only year of, I think my life since yeah. I had a boyfriend that I was ever single. So that's probably why they were like oh, okay. you and Rob. Yeah. Nice. That's insect incestual. I don't like okay. you and Rob. It's not, it's not so, good. Did your, did Beth, your wife ever get jealous or any weird, anything like she was, I mean, she would come to things. So she knew James, she had met everybody. I don't think she ever really got like, you I know, feel like I upset about it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I think more than anything, it was probably weird to like, look at, you know, friends or your parents and like, see your boyfriend, like in the newspaper with somebody else and like, have to like, try to explain like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, yeah, but no, there was never, she didn't personally care. I mean, she, I don't think she ever felt like any threatened by it or anything like that yeah so what, she's like a beautiful amazing girl she's probably like that idiot jamie no she, no, she is amazing i mean i killed her a couple days ago this quarantine's really getting to me <laughs> but but she was she was great i, I really did look at my husband uh yeah. a day or two ago and i was like are we gonna make it yeah <laughs> make it. we might not make it <laughs> yeah i just want to miss them a little bit right it's like hard to miss them when you're with them all the time we'll yeah. Yeah. Lindsay's officially living here as of tonight we just moved yeah. her out of her place because oh, i hear i heard jamie was mad about you you guys traveling back and forth right so yeah i heard see i heard the, i listen i'm listening i'm on yeah. I'm all <laughs> over this um I'm glad you're yeah so i i hope to get we hope to really figure it out here while we're under lockdown if this is going to be a long-term thing you know what i mean <laughs> Where, uh, figure out here um look i well, nothing no we're doing great no one from the pajama pants world has met Lindsay yet yeah come on bring out really? my face no, bring, it. bring it on Show them the show them the force. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh what an Kramer's in. Hello. Hi guys. Can you can it's you real. tell my favorite thing you've ever said is can you tell them what you said about Casim and uh, Steve Urkel? Oh. Oh well, I'll tell it. Yeah, he does it better. That's well, good. She- let's let's have let's have your girlfriend on so you could tell all of her stories. Well, he does tell the story, I think, a little of bit. Of course, better. he's the best. He tells them all. Go ahead. No, you can tell it then. <laughs> Speaking of this mic here. I don't get my you own. You guys are the cutest. Oh, we're about to murder each other. We're about four hours into living together. Yeah, it's <laughs> going great. It's going great. I brought a couple plants over. He had a heart attack. Why? No, they're not going to fit. Oxygen. Plants. She has, she has like plants that... Are out of Jurassic Park. They're just huge. They're healthy. They're healthy. Like yeah, it. she doesn't want him to die. Yeah. Um, okay, listen. So this story, Cassim and I dated seven years ago. Um, and then after kind of stayed friends, and I saw this video randomly of Steve Urkel turning into Stefan when he like goes behind the couch. <laughs> Totally. And I randomly, I watched this. Stefan Urkel. Stefan Urkel. I'm as remembering I that this, now. Yeah. 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 Cassim and I had been broken up for like a couple of years, maybe two or three years. He went years. into a machine. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I sent him a quick text. We maybe text twice a year. And I said, listen, I just decided who you are. You're minute 216 of no. when Steve uh, is turning into <laughs> Stefan. You're, you're butchering like right it. right in the middle. You're butchering it. She oh, said, this is why I wanted her to tell it. This, yeah. That's not verba- No, you're, but you butchered it. Okay. You I can tell it better than her. And I heard it once. Yeah. You butchered verbatim. You said it takes Steve Urkel 44 seconds to turn into Stefan or Kel. I believe you are what happens at the 22 second mark. Same thing, dude. And I mm-hmm. thought that was the best summation yeah. of, of, uh, of me that anyone had ever told me. 
See, that's just way, what happens. Right. What happens when you hang out with Lindsay and Cass is like something like that happens. And then she goes, I'm big picture, dude. Focused on the details. I'm big picture, dude. dude. You would die today. So uh, I had them come help me move and watching me pack is hysterical because I am only big picture. So I only work on a room until all the big things are done. And when it's like, there's just piles of small stuff all over my house and they showed up, they're like, you're not ready to move. I'm like, big picture, couches, beds. Like, cause I have to, anything I have to sit and pay attention to do that all has to be done at a certain time. Like my brain's in you big would picture. Not, if you walked into it, you would not know that somebody was packing to move. It looks like a house you would walk in on The Walking Dead that's been abandoned for years. <laughs> There's cans on the ground. That's not... You and I would be a good team because I'm like more... Yes. Detail, my, organize, not... My sister and I are a good team because she can like sit and organize while I'm doing all the big stuff. But normally I have to do all the big stuff and then come back. Right. Hi, I didn't meet Jason. Hi, Jason. Jason. Hi, how are you? Very good. Where, where are you? Are you from New York? I'm in New York. Yeah. Oh, Quit flirting. York. I'm sorry, Please. Jason. She doesn't know that you You know a, what? You're closer to minute 44 towards the I end. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Thank you. You're what happens yeah. at 56. More God, it, 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 takes him, it takes him 44 seconds and you're minute 44. She thinks you're fucking real cool. Yeah, you're thanks. overcooked. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> nice. I can see I kn- I know you're wearing a hoodie but I see this. I see what's I see what's under that. What do you, yeah, hold on. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. That. So just so you know how serious Jason is about this shit, when I first started working out, I'm asking him questions. He's like, well, the first thing you got to do is get a food scale. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you got to weigh out eight ounces of meat. I was like, whoa, dude, I'm never going to be that guy. Dude, that's the well, best. We, we, we've watched My 600 Pound Life and they like oh. don't make their goals. And they're like, oh, I, get, I just like wasn't using the scale. And the doctor's like, you are not like, you're a fucking liar. Not only are you not using the scale, you're eating fucking uh, fast food still. By the way, how much do they have to eat to lose weight? They probably still have to eat a shit ton. They put them on very restrictive, like, they, like how? Salad, like three meals a day and like salad, no carbs. Wow. Something's yeah. got to be, I mean, with your metabolism, how could, right? I well, mean, because they're preparing not them. Not everybody can get the 600 pounds. It's crazy. They're preparing them for the stomach staple, which like, okay. They can't eat very much. Which they can't yeah. eat very much. Right. Uh, do you want me to go? No, you're fine. You're doing great. Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay, what do you think is going to be the most annoying thing about living with Cassim? Oh yeah. T- please. I'm um, super clean. I pick up after myself. <laughs> we have been ar- like, so good. <laughs> We argue a little, but our arguments have been like next level and so mean and awful. I mean, pull up a chair. We're we're both kings of the castle. So it's very, it's difficult. We're both like very, I'll say something. He goes, no, absolutely not. And he'll say something. I'll be like, no, absolutely. Well, I think, I think Kasim is the king of his castle where you're the king of any castle you walk into. (laughs) I'm not going to argue that point. And I appreciate and respect you. No, no, that wasn't a compliment. (laughs) I'm seeing it that way. (laughs) No, no, no. He's dissing you hard. When I first met Lindsay, it was, well, first we had lunch and then we went up to her cabin in Big Bear. And like the first 10 minutes or whatever, she had to tell somebody what to do and it was somebody who like kind of works for her but oh, yeah <laughs> is also close to her or whatever so i'm just getting to know Lindsay, and i'm sitting by the pool and i'm like okay like uh, and the person was trying to do something for her but wasn't doing it right and she goes hey look at me <laughs> and i was like <laughs> she's like put it when i talk to you up and put it on the thing and they were like okay okay and i was like oh shit i just want an ounce of that i want Dude, just the, like a little bit I of that train you and maybe that's what i should be offering is like alpha training give her some teach me do anything teach for these sweatshirts me. um but the part that you're missing rob is that while you guys were up at my place i was getting ready to do a giant launch event and i had like six guys there working for me putting furniture together and making the place like not look as like a ghetto motel. No, No, listen, I I bust your balls when when you, when we argue, you say, look at me. I bust your balls on the podcast, but I have had nothing but great times hanging out with you. I think you're, I think you're the best. Oh, thanks. Well, also because whenever we hang out with Rob and she brings all her friends, they all get crushes on Rob. Nobody has a bigger crush on Rob than you, buddy. That's right. 
I'm not. And that's the only one I care about, honestly. No, we've been so excited too because my sister got this new place. It's cute, and she's anti dog. So we've like been inviting because we all have dogs. So it's hard to like hang with Rob. But Kelsey's place is dog free zone, so Rob can come. Neutral territory. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Kasim, can you give us uh, a little taste of the conspiracy juices you've been drinking? In regards to what? You need to talk to Cutter. My husband is like all on this conspiracy shit. He told me we're all going about to lose our Wi-Fi and everything tomorrow because shit. Oh, I I don't know about. Yeah, I've been trying to steer clear of that stuff because I I have enough stress between moving and and doing and getting finding renters and, and getting her out of her place. That any extra stress that might like sh- rock my world and he's make Fox me- Newsing it, dude. He's believing we're going the regular route. We're you know, I put on CNN when my kids yeah. go to bed. I put on CNN for like my twenty minutes of news a day because that's all I get. And he just starts barking at me. Hey, all this is just is how they hate Trump. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, can we I just fucking on. watch something that I want for what? Because all I'm doing is watching like Daniel Tiger and Blippy all day. And I just want to watch like a little bit of news. So then he, we get in bed and we're like about to watch Tiger King. And then he's like, you want to know what's really happening? <laughs> <laughs> That's his pillow yeah. talk to you right now. Yes. Uh, Jamie, I'm telling you right our now. Our Wi-Fi went out for a minute today and he was like, hmm? what's happening? Jamie, if I lose Wi-Fi, I am going to your house. Just so you know. Yes, I told you that. You need to. Yeah. I'm coming there. Wi-Fi, I could be alone for a long time. With no Wi-Fi. Basically, I'm it's, this is a, there's going to be like a clearing of like the bad people, a bit of a government takeover is kind of what I'm hearing. Yes. You, <laughs> I, Kassim, you, are you? you no, know, we're not you, hip to anything. Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm not hip to it, but I am totally. Oh, I thought you were giving me like a little like Smithers. Like, yes, yes. No, we're ready to jump on board. We're watching, Kassim, like, do you think real that estate. That they're preparing, preparing for the fake alien invasion. Oh, is that one that you're this aliens hearing? that did this to us, Casa? No, I wish it was. Unfortunately, it's a much more sinister force right here at home. It's been here the whole time. Bats. Yeah, it's a bat sandwich <laughs> that caused this whole thing. A bat fucking. Sandwich. Hey, um, look, I I gotta get to some of these emails. Should I read some emails that we're getting? Because I I don't think we're getting through enough of them. Yeah. I didn't know we were getting any. I mean, la- our last one was like all the questions from the fans, but yeah, of course. Well, I think we got to do it all every podcast. No, we should do it every podcast, but we, should, we shouldn't we should act like we're not we getting it. We have a Jason here. here. We don't want to waste this. We're already wasting. Wait, hold on. Oh, Here's my I also question. Got, I also I got, got I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm a fan of the show. I got a question for Jason. Jason. Hey, what's up, buddy? When you teach your kids to wipe their butt, do you tell them to stand up and wipe their butt or... Ooh. Oh, here we go. Or, or sit lean. down and wipe their butt. Yeah. Lean? That's a good question. You know, I feel like when you're teaching them, I will say when you're teaching them, I feel like they're standing up because for you to do it for them, you have to get them to stand up. So I'm going to have to, uh, you know what? My son's, he'll be 12 this summer, but I, I'll just break in next time he's, he's <laughs> uh, pooping and check out what, what he's doing. I'm not, I'm not sure what his technique is at this point. I mean, I know we left him standing up, but he might be sitting down at this point. I'm trying right now to let my six-year-old like do it like himself because I feel like yeah. I'm over it. But the problem is that his whole thing is that it's not the standing or the sitting. It's the toilet paper etiquette. It's he crumples it into a ball. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's and what like, Lindsay you fold it and like he can't get it. Yeah. Well, here's here's what's we're big on the fresh wipes here. I gotta say, we're a fresh wipe. We have wipe, cotton right? too, have, but yeah. you crumble okay, it yeah. Well, like, here's the thing with cotton yeah. Yeah, whole, yeah, you want to flatten that there's up. There's a whole anti-flush movement happening now. A lot of people trying to get the don't flush anything but toilet you paper. Shouldn't. And I'm a big Cottonelle guy. I use at least two. I, I do it until that shit's white. You're not supposed to. No, there's really no such thing as a flushable wipe. And there's really there's a great documentary. Shoot, I'll come up with the name, but it shows you. The workers, because basically what happens is that get her out of here. And oil <laughs> wraps around this stuff, and it, it they're called like fat burgers or something. Well, they want it's you wild. to throw it away in a separate trash can. I'm not gonna have poo poo wipes in a trash can. That's a tough. In sell, my yeah. bathroom. It's, I mean, well, you guys can do it because you're in couples. It's fine, but that's what they do in Mexico. I mean, wait, hold on. 
So it's not America, you can't flush any t- toilet paper. Yeah, all the toilet paper, and you just take your trash out every day. It's like there's crazy. a show on Netflix right now that just came out called A Hundred People, and it's they have a hundred people do something to figure out. Like, so let's say like we talk about wiping, right? And we're like, oh, you definitely stand or you definitely sit. So they have a hundred people do it at random people, and then you see like, okay, ninety nine people are fucking standing when they wipe. One sits. Obviously, you thought this was normal, but this is normal. So they have an episode where they go, we're going to discuss and they open up a curtain and it's a t- the whole setup, a toilet, the, the uh, toilet paper, the whole, and they go sit down and go to the bathroom as you normally would. And we're going to track everything. And I was like, this is fucking genius. But I got to say, Netflix is very good at stuff. Normally they fuck this all up. Like they didn't ask the right things. What they asked was like, how many squares of toilet paper do you use? And and what about this? And they didn't ask, like, do you sit or stand when you wipe? <laughs> they have these doctors on the show who are, like, uh, trying to be actors, and they're, like, acting and trying to hit, like, punchlines. And it's all really bad. But the idea of the show is really good. Yeah. I feel it's like a, we could do that on our own. It's like Freakonomics or something, right? Sort of. I don't know what that is. It's like a book about those kinds of stats. Yeah. Why don't you try reading all right. Can I get to this email? Well, I see okay. he gets this like attitude when Lindsay's around too, you know. Now you see what I deal with. Yeah, and sure. that's what happened with wiping. Jason, so here's what happened with, with yeah. wiping, right? He tell, 20, I, 26 or 44. Uh-huh. What is he? 44 or 26? What? Oh, he's a 44. 40. Oh, he's a 22. He's a tw- 20. He was a half of 44, right? The article thing, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm you, a 22. Man. You're a minute 44. Yeah. yeah you're 44 minutes. <laughs> okay. This, uh, this email is from Laura. She says, Hey gang, loving your podcast. I recently found it while in quarantine. Thank you. So I have a lot of catching up to do. What I love most about it is how real you all are. Feel like I'm chilling with my friends, smoking weed and chatting. I can totally relate to all of you. I didn't watch the Sopranos when it aired. I became a fan three or four years ago after I had to see what the fascination with the, sh- with the show was and because I was fucking clueless when anyone was talking about it. I'm now on my fifth rewatch of the entire series, season six actually, as I write, and it never gets old. I have a question for Jamie Lynn and Rob. Jamie Lynn, if I'm correct, MS is an autoimmune disease, and I'm wondering if you have any experience with any of the disorders that accompany autoimmune disease that no one ever hears of. And Rob, congrats on your sobriety. Keep going strong, dude. Keep going strong, dude. Did you get sober on your own or with professional help? And do you think being so young in The Sopranos contributed to your addiction? Or would you say it was because you liked partying? My bad. That was a two-part question. Thank you all for keeping me entertained during lockdown and helping me keep my sanity in these crazy fucking surreal times we're living in. Stay safe and healthy, Laura. Go ahead, Jamie. I don't know if I understand the question. Um, uh, that's an autoimmune woman to re- 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 read anything it? that any symptoms that relate to an autoimmune disease. I mean, I have an autoimmune disease, so any- no, I don't have fatigue. Um, even though I'm drinking coffee right now, that's just cause I'm taking care of two children by myself every day, but I don't have fatigue. I don't, I mean, I just have like certain symptoms from MS, but, um, I don't know what that, I don't know what her question means. I'm so sorry. I can't answer it. Okay. Well, I wish I could help you, but all I have is this terrible <laughs> I email. I no is just fine. It just asked if you had other things and you're like, no, no. Just, this is enough. I'm good. No. Sorry, Laura. We tried, we tried there, Laura, and, and that we got to get points for that. Yeah. And I got, I think we, I talked about it on the show before, but I got, <laughs> Sober from most things with uh, on my own, and then I got help with Xanax because uh, Xanax you can like die from the withdrawals, and I was really freaking out about it and having a ton of anxiety, and I just couldn't uh, shake it on my own. So I got help. Uh, I saw a specialist for help getting off of that, and uh, yeah. How how are you doing without the gym? How do you do? You feel like that's affecting it all. The, the part where the gym is driving me nuts because I was so used to my routine and getting up and like, you know, going to the gym. I think there's something about driving to the gym that gets me mentally ready that I have 
not worked out at all since the whole quarantine thing has happened because left to my own devices, I'm very poorly disciplined. And I, I like popcorn. And I've been really getting into popcorn. For dinner. And my kids uh, eat it every day, popcorn. Oh, it's been great. And and I'm getting the movie theater butter popcorn. And I'm just I can see my body going to shit. There's there's one called uh, Lesser Evil Popcorn, and it's honey jalapeno flavor in a green bag. Check it out. Ooh. Aye, aye, aye. Ooh, Very yeah. good. So what, Jane, did you smoke weed? Do you smoke weed before we do these? Once a week only now. Really? And how do you how do you decide when that once a week is going to be? Um, it's the it's like usually. It's usually by like a Friday where it's just been Monday through Friday of homeschooling and taking care of the baby and doing everyone's laundry and vacuuming and mopping and cooking and cleaning. And because Cutter's work has not stopped. If, if anything, he's busier now. And I respect his job and what he has to do. And I'm, I'm not trying, I'm not complaining about everything. Like I, there's a part of me that's like loves it. And I'm like super proud of myself, but it, also it's exhausting. And I'm like, also feel like my main purpose every day is to make sure that my children don't kill each other because it seems like they wake up every day trying to figure out how to. Um, so by <laughs> Friday, like I know I have the relief and the help tomorrow that I'm like, I'm getting so fucking stoned on Friday night and like eating it. Cause then I know I could sleep in on Saturday and I'll have his help. And wait, so Friday nights are usually it. Okay. But tonight I might a little bit cause I'm, this is I got I swam three times today with my children. You swam? Mm-hmm. Really? What do you mean three times? It like, tires them out, right? Went in the water three times. At 9 a.m., at 1 p.m., and at 4 p.m. Oh, you scheduled it like gym? No. They just wanted oh. to go back in and like I couldn't listen to the whining and like so, what time are they going to bed now, Jane? Are they like the up all like crazy? By, the baby baby's down by like 6 45, 7. Okay. Um, my my six year old's still up right now, hanging with my husband. Watching okay. All right. Yeah, but it's... Have you? I've what are they watching? Three ninjas. Oh, oh no! But I feel like a song. Yeah. This is the maybe eighth or ninth time in a row he's watched it. He's obsessed with it. Yeah, the middle. Isn't it amazing how many times they could watch the same thing over and over again? Over and like, over. Like, there's no limit to like it's just that the same. and Mighty Ducks three. He keeps going back. Yeah. Oh, he's got good taste. Yeah. He's he. You know what we should have? Oh no, Casson did that on his old show, right? You had your mom review movies. I was gonna say we should have Bo do movie reviews on here. Well, it doesn't mean we, we can't have, have Bo do it. The movie review for us right now, Three Ninjas. Yeah, yeah Three Ninjas oh, movie review. Hold on. Wait, I, I've hit like uh, the threshold with that. I had my son watch Gangs in New York with me the other night, and then oh my <laughs> watch. Yeah, and then I'm like, you know what? He's got to see a Scorsese movie I, at some I point, love, right? I love that movie for Daniel Day Lewis. That's what I'm saying. And then yeah. Cameron Diaz almost does an equal performance, but like opposite as in like not great, yeah. you know? Right, and it, right, right. There's, a, there's a moment where she says San Francisco in it and it takes, it takes me out of the movie so bad. She's, uh, they were talking about getting to San Francisco and then sh she says San Francisco. And it was, it, it came out of nowhere and it was yeah. so weird and if she was at one of those moments in her career where they were just putting her in everything and like that was her peak and um and you can't forgive her and i for to this day whenever she texts me i don't respond <laughs> i don't blame you yeah there he is hi. hey there he is hi bo hello hi so how do you hello. keep such a cool haircut during quarantine it's just drying like that he got a good haircut right before he got lucky bo you say hi to Lindsay? Hi. Hey, How are you? Good. Your hair does look great. What do you say? I didn't get a haircut. <laughs> How? I, How well, did you do that? I well, just got in the shower and then I styled it, styled it like that. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. I just have to ask you a favor. So what? How could you give a review of Three Ninjas? Like, tell them what Three Ninjas is about. I know what Three Ninjas. No, they don't. So, we, what would you tell someone who's never seen Three Ninjas? What is the movie about? I would say it was about like. So I gotta explain it. Well, what what do you like better? 
What do you like better, Three Ninjas or Mighty Ducks Three? Three Ninjas. Why is th- Why is Three Ninjas better? I would than say Ducks three. Three. Show those three kids and the, those three kids. Wait, those three kids. Um. Uh. Those three kids are. No pressure. We could do this later. Bo, just, what if I were to tell you? Is there a lot of karate? Yes. So the grandpa is a very good karate teacher, mm. and they and Wobbers. It's just it's apparently just like Home Alone, but they they have ninja skills. Uh, and the out of the three kids, which one do you like the best? I think the middle one is the coolest. The kid. third, the third, the oldest kid, the third and the second. Tum-tum? No, Tum Tum is the first. Oh. Which which mask do you like the best out of all their masks? Rocky? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Really oh. think about it. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, their the, the, the ninja names are Colt, Rocky, and Tum Tum. Yeah. And what, I so check this why, out. Why do you like Mighty Ducks 3 more than Mighty Ducks 2 and 1? Well, I like Mighty Ducks two more than three and one. I, the the one's the worst. <laughs> really, I like one. Two's what? the best. Is two You're in wrong. the Olympics or is that three? That's three. Three and two is with that's the two. Number, that's right? two. That's two. Three is high school. Oh. Okay. Well, that's, that's that's Bo's movie review for the week, guys. We're gonna thank you, Bo. Bo. Bo's quarantine. Next week, we're gonna show him more movies. I think maybe Stand by Me and Cutter and. Oh, yeah. I'm kidding. That's a big departure. Yeah. Departure, yeah. And Gangs of New York. Right? Would... Yes, and Gangs of New York. Yeah. All right, Bo. Say bye. Bye, Bo. Bye, Bo. Bye. Bye, thank you, Bo. See you next week, Bo. Bye. It's cute. Wait, so Jason, when when yeah. Jamie said that her kids were trying to kill each other, you made a face like, yeah. Oh, my God. My kids, all they do is – and they they try to kill each other constantly, and they're yelling at each other. But then when they do get that little time where they're playing and they're laughing, yeah, I, I, which is – it's great, but it's great for like three minutes. So now we're just trained to the point where if we hear them giggling and laughing too loud, we break it up. I feel like I'm just like a bouncer now that like yes. too much fun. It's about to get ugly. It's about yes, to, get, you know, like, that. cause it's going to go to crying any second. Mm-hmm. I said it's to like, Bo today, I was like, there's something that happens, like a switch goes off and I see him start to like grit his teeth and like, look at, I'm like, you get like the look of death, like out of nowhere, like you're having fun, you're jumping. And then he's like, like he just like all of a sudden. He's yeah, like, the too much oh, fun. You gotta yeah. you gotta cut it out. I feel bad. Like I'm always stopping them from having fun. Like no, no, we're not having fun. Knock it off. No, no laughing. Knock the laughing off. If yeah, but- my baby was older and like could fend for himself a little bit more and wasn't still so like wobbly, maybe I wouldn't be more relaxed. But like he's yeah, still yeah. such a like a hazard. No, it's too little. Plus, yeah, I mean when we were there, he he had a pretty big spill. And then recently on your Instagram, I feel like I saw him go. I mean, he's he seems accident prone. They want a quarantine. Oh wow! Well, that was good though. Lindsay, from one to ten, how would you rate your quarantining skills? Oh, I mean, horrible. I have a hard time sitting still. It's been very difficult. She's got ADHD, ADD. And I was insanely busy. Per- I mean, my job, everything. I've been like the busiest person of ever, and then like overnight. All my work went away. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm I have no purpose or relevance. I'm the breadwinner and I'm not He's making any money. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm tells you how board. bad I'm how unemployed. bad things are. Cause um, I think we were talking about doing uh an episode in Jamie's backyard. And I think without throwing you under the bus, Kasim said he didn't want to do that. And I think the real reason is he doesn't trust your quarantine. My oh, my skills. No, no, if no. I get Corona, it's because she didn't wash her hands. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm being very cautious. I've now. way stepped up my game and I'm like hardly going out um, at all. Just doing grocery store and 
I was doing beach walks, but then they took those away. And then I was like skateboarding at night. But um, yeah, no, I've been doing all the things. I mean, we're getting some judgment because we're in like a pod. I still see my sister and brother, but we're like the only people. Yeah. We're getting a lot of like online judgment for that. Really? Um, I want to. I'm like looking to open up into a pod eventually. Yeah, Jamie's like, you guys should come over. (laughs) I know. We're we're on day 21. So I would love to have people that are around 21 to start potting with us. Well, I I would, but the problem is I would have to take an Uber to you and that breaks my quarantine. Yeah, I could pick you up. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you if you want to do one day like this weekend, I'm down. Okay. But then somebody, but then like Cutter, I would have to drive me home so we could keep the pod going. I mean, we're so happy to just leave. I want to be responsible, you know. I want to be responsible about this because the sooner it's over, the sooner um, she gets out of my house. And uh, <laughs> like, yeah, it gets. We're trying to buy a house together, but he still thinks this is like, oh yeah, we'll see if this works out. And we're like, this is just like a big. Yeah, I mean, yes, we did buy a house together, but like to me, that's just, you know, a temporary sort of like test. Totally, same. And um, I mean, you can back out of a house purchase, right? Totally. At any moment. It's paperwork. Yeah, it's just paperwork. Yeah, he's basically trying to be a lawn shark that gets some ass, right? Yeah, hell yeah. That's me uh, always wanting to have sex cast. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Tell you what, who's got all the N95 masks? Oh, she's got that's a what I, Okay, so that's what I wanted to ask. Who, is anybody wearing the mask when they go out? Like, I have one. I don't, I, have, I don't go out. I have a lot of them. I'm going out tomorrow for the first time. Where the fuck and do you we, think So will going? you wear it? Um, I ha- I, so I'm going, so I have, I have to get a medication every six months. So oh, I have to okay. go to an oncology center. So I called the people today to just find out what the protocol was. And you can't come in with anybody. You have to have an N95 mask, gloves. They take your temperature upon arrival. You walk into a room that has been fully sanitized before you get in. You only have one nurse. You're not allowed to leave the room, like to go anywhere else except the bathroom and back. And like a bathroom is assigned to just you for the day. Oh, whoa. Because they're dealing with people that have cancer in this place. Yeah. I'd imagine they're taking Super serious. So Super sure. serious. I, I, you got to go in that bathroom. Nervous, but I was like, I feel like if there's any place for me to go that's safe, it's probably there because they're taking yeah. such. You've got to poop. You've got to poop I in that bathroom. I have to keep the they mask cleaned, on for the whole time I'm there. Which is they like, cleaned oh. it just for you. And you, yeah, there's probably Aesop soap there. You got to curl a snake in that toilet, Jamie. Oh, what? Get what? A, Thank you. You got to you got to curl up a snake, a little double tapered little coil in He's there. He's the only Just person you, that Kat. says this. Have you ever heard anybody talk about like taking a shit and saying? Get a little. You got to leave him a plan. I mean, I, I have. Yeah, yeah, of course. But wait. So I've here's never- the thing. In our last episode, we asked. Cast him if you guys like shit in front of each other and this and he was like no, but I think she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. she's very pro poop. No, as a person, I'm, she's I'm very, pro poop. Oh, like I'll, pee, I usually pee with the door open. I that's mean, fine. That's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm pretty. I'm anti anything toilet. No, I don't. No toilet play. I'm. I'm just. But I don't have issues. I can go wherever. Like if I'm out, I'll go. I don't have like he's very. We have to plan the day. Well, he doesn't, but in the back of my head, if Hunter's like, like that too. Yeah, he can only go at. Home. He prefers at home. Yeah. I prefer at home. I, 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 and I can hold my poo as long as I need to He's until I get back home. He's hardly ever spent the night at my house. And partially it's because of his like bathroom routine, even though I got him all the supplies he requested and he has his own bathroom there. I like a home plop. But because I don't I'm have a heater. You, yeah. A heater? Yeah. He likes to, we call it Boca Raton. But before he goes in the morning, <laughs> he puts on a heating fan. So he gets it to a very nice. I, I leave the heat, the heat fan on. In, in the bathroom for 10 minutes before I go. So when I go I in, I feel talk. like I'm really getting to know you. I feel like I I'm like, a fan of this. I like the whole routine thing. I like this. Yeah. I like <laughs> setting a vibe. I'm into that. Programmed, yeah. Program for comfort, man. This Lindsay, in the most polite way possible, you look like somebody and you have the vibe of somebody who can poop anywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You Do I like that? Okay. Thank no, you. you look like you look like you have the vibe of somebody who prefers home, but if you have to do it, you're like, whatever. 
Doesn't even prefer. I don't care. Doesn't care. It's never been a thing I even thought about. No, no, no. I'm saying Jamie. I was saying Jamie, but I feel like. Yeah, but I don't care. I'm like Lindsay. But it's also like the second time I met you was like up at the cabin. So I could imagine you just like, you know. I grew up up in the woods. Like whatever. Yeah. Oh, you know. You know why this thing is, is going to last for a long time? Like, we think it's people like us who make one little mistake or this. I know a girl who I was speaking with today. She flew in from Germany five days ago, uh, took three connecting flights. She said they never asked her one question. They never took her temperature, never anything. And then two days ago, like, whoever's in charge of calling, she said it. Who's ever in charge of like making those phone calls or whatever? They called her and they were like, hey, you, yeah, they said you have to quarantine for like two Four weeks days. or whatever. But days after she got home and nobody. So she took a flight in from Germany and then she took a flight from uh, San Francisco to Nevada. And she's like, nobody asked us a single question. Well, there. Yeah. Prom- promise us you'll quarantine. OK. Now get out of here, you little scamp. I think I think there's a two weeks of just increasing uh, cases, and then hopefully we'll start to see a decline. But I think we're right in the middle of like a major one of these on the graph. But like they said, the the decline is going to be way slower than the uptick. Oh, yeah, yeah so I'm over it, man. Whatever. Tell us, Jane. Tell us how you're feeling, Jane. I just I think it's like. I don't do well with the, like, I I just, I wish we had like a time frame. Like I just, I don't know what to make of life. Like I said, there's a part of me that's like enjoying this and now I'm getting used to this. And then like, I'm I'm like, and then everyone's leaving again. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's just like really uncomfortable for me. I like routine and I just feel like I'm starting to get, like I said, I'm getting used to this. So now this is like another month of this. And then but maybe more, maybe three months, like maybe my son's not going back to school until September, like, or is it May? Like, it's just so much uncertainty. And I'm, it's a big lesson for me in my life in general, because I, I like to know things. Um, yeah. It's hard for me. Did you have any? I don't think they're going back. I was working on the, the TV thing for the lodge, but I'm wondering, like, so the network, they can't film anything. So like- No, productions were shut down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my manager texted me today. He's like, how are you doing? I'm just checking in. Anything I can do for you? I was like, yeah, get me a fucking job. When this is all no jobs anywhere. They're saying like, I mean, we might not even film now till July or August or- Right. Who even knows? I'm not even worried about acting jobs. I think it's just more like my life. Like just with my kids. I don't know. I don't know. Like there's a part of me that's like enjoying what's happening and it's, you know. What do you think? I heard this thing. You would think it was funny. It was like, if there's a baby boomer generation from coronavirus, it's definitely not people who already had kids. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I yeah. think I put one of those things on Instagram. Like any baby that's born out of quarantine is an only child. Yeah. <laughs> no one is procreating right now that has a kid is quarantining with their children. Yeah. Fuck okay. no. So what, what besides Tiger King, what is everybody watching? I'm doing a lot of the office again. We went back and like, cause my kids too, they love the office. Oh, that's so, fun. That's like, yeah, I know. It's like fun when they start watching, finally start watching some stuff where you can like yeah. both sort of enjoy it. Yeah. So, a a lot that. of the, a lot of the office and tiger King. I really just, I'll tell you, I know besides tiger, King, which by the way, I told a couple people that I was watching the lion King, different movie entirely. <laughs> that's by, yeah. you know, very different. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're like the live action one or the original? I never saw. I never saw. Oh, yeah. really? The Lion King's a good The Lion King, I think I saw the the cartoon. Yeah, whatever. Years ago, yeah. but I didn't see that new one. Mufasa. But, yeah. Yeah, Mufasa. What do you what about you guys, Cass? Lindsay? Oh, Lindsay doesn't watch TV. She doesn't watch TV and uh quite frankly, she likes to regulate the amount of TV that I watch. But sure guess what? I'm, I'm 36. I'm my own man and I'm in oh, charge. Is that right? I'm in charge <laughs> is that right? Yeah, it's right. So how much are you allowed to watch now? I watch old reruns of Reno 911. That's my go-to. I um I've been watching uh I've been watching a fair amount of TV. I saw Tiger King twice because I showed her the second time. I did watch that. But I started I picked up where I left off on The Walking Dead because I feel like the vibe fits what's happening right now in the world and I am right in the middle of season 6. 
of Walking Dead and I'm going to crush it. I'm probably going to be done with it in the next few days. Right, babe? He got through Californication. Got through Californication. Yeah. And, and I watched Tiger King and I watch, I'm, I'm watching a lot of stuff and it's mainly for, re, for research. For he got, Rob, you would die. He got so excited when he ha had me watch Tiger King because I very rarely like do TV. And he no. came in like, okay. And he has to like set every scene up for me. And he just like loved watching me watch. Yeah, like, yeah. Pausing and like, what do you think about that? And I'm like, so cute. Yeah. Cassim likes to watch. I like to watch people watch. That's Cutter. Cutter's the same. Yeah. yeah. Sit and watch me watch it if you've seen it before. Well, he's, he's a, a voyeur race. of voyeurs. Yeah. Yeah, that is one of the categories of porn I do. I'll click on if, if I ever go on one of those sites, cool which, is, which is rare. Um, hey, J Jason, where can we find you online? Are oh, good. Back to me after that? Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so what, Jason, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you on this is you don't do any social media, right? No, I know. Oh, I don't. What I'm, a ref that's so refreshing. So always. I, listen, I'm not like people who do it. I, so I get it. Like, I understand like that's the way, especially with the entertainment business, that's the way. But I, I don't know. I'm just like. Respect, man. I'm, yeah, I'm not into like sharing everything first of all i spend so much time with my kids i don't want to put them on there now jame i know you do I, again everybody's different but it's like for me i just i don't know i just i feel like so many people are just out there bragging it's like i don't know i like i like the whole humble thing where people are just kind of like quietly do their own thing yeah, I'm yeah, a with this stuff i sound like an old man but it's like it's no, true. No, I the, just, screen, the screen is split Properly. The guys on this side, no social media. And then that side is, you know, social media kings, kings of the game. That's right. You, yeah, Rob, you don't do You're it. You're not right? cool, Rob. You're not cooler than us because you don't have Instagram or Twitter. Okay. You're not cooler than me. Your insecurities are shining right now, pal. I didn't Doesn't say matter, I, okay. I just said we're different. That's all. Yeah. Gasson also only posts like two videos a year on Instagram. And it's usually he like grows a tomato. Yeah. And he does a whole bit about how he picks the tomato. Follow me on Instagram. Pairs it. <laughs> and if you want to follow Jason, it's got to be in the streets. And same thing with Rob. You can find Just Jamie. Just straight up stalking. Like, yeah. yeah. At Jason, Jamie Lynn. Jason's on TV right now. I have. Aren't you on, uh, aren't you on Law & Order still or no? Maybe a rerun. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, uh, that was a few years ago at this point that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did a few seasons of it, like, you know, sporadically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. yeah but, uh, go dig up his yeah. shows. I'm sure they're on Hulu and, and things like that. Right. Netflix. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right. I got to go pee. Uh, Hey, if you guys are watching this, thank you. Hit the subscribe button. If you haven't done that yet, um, or not, it's totally fine. And uh, our Instagram is, we're crushing it on Instagram. Thank you so much for all the new <laughs> people that came over from Drea's episode. Hasim said I, am follow, I, am, I, do, I do have an Instagram account just to follow you guys. I have, oh, I, follow, oh. I follow Jane, I have, but it's like a private account that I follow basically like four friends. I follow Jane, I follow Pajama Pants now. And, oh, okay, well, thanks. All right. Yeah, what, what a, what Hi, a <laughs> No, I'm, well, I'm going to start following oh, Captain oh, yeah, now sure. after today. He, mm -hmm. he just Wait, said. Can I have I, your yeah. thoughts? Because I might do this before I see you all next. I'm thinking of do it. No, no, no. Don't yes. do it. Yeah, short hair is so fun. And maybe don't do it. I think there's a way for you to like Photoshop a photo of it so we can see kind of before you actually make that decision. Jamie, I think that's you need a big, to that's a big decision. and go short. Great. Bangs? No. I'm pro bang right now. I'm back. This is like you planning to come out of quarantine with a new look or, you know, I wait. have a hippie hair. My hair when it's straight is like literally down to my butt right now. Quarantine. Don't don't do it, Jamie. I, I think your hair is like your trademark. It would it would be like me not being like aggressive or something. <laughs> I don't I, I think you should you should keep your long. long. All right. Yeah. But if I do come over there, I think you should cut mine because mine is. Whoa. Would you? Would you? Wow! Yeah, it's getting wow. out of control. Wow. Talk about hippie you look hair. Ridiculous. I know. Would you cut it if I come over there? I'd love to. Okay, I'll let you do whatever you want to. If you want to cut it short, you can cut it short. Wait, buzz it. I'm gonna buzz Cutter's head. Yeah, no, I, buzz I, I've cutter. done buzzing too many times. I want. I want you to do. I want you to be creative with it. Do something dope. Okay, I like this.
And Jason, we want to have you. Uh, we don't have the money to um, fly you out here, unfortunately, but we do Wait, want to have you in the studio one day. I would love to. I, I, yeah. I want to check out the studio. Say hi. I will absolutely, and thank you guys for having me. It on. was so nice. Uh, we had fun. fun. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the show. I'll be listening. Great seeing you, bro. All right, great seeing all you Minute guys. Minute forty four. <laughs> thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Good luck, Lindsay and Kasim. Yeah, we're doing great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, good luck. You guys are so cute. Love you guys. Love bye you guys. guys. Say hi to everybody Thank for you. me. I told you I didn't want you on the show! <laughs> <laughs>